Today, we are talking about Figma. Figma is a design tool in the same vein as Sketch or Adobe XD. And these tools have a focus in UI, UX design, application design, web design, and similar. However, they are not limited to just those areas. They excel in those areas due to some of their special features like their components, for example, or their ability to create code examples or share a live preview. These things really help speed up the design and developer workflow. In this series, we're going to be going over Figma uh, from a beginner's perspective and someone who maybe has little or no design experience. And we're going to grow both your Figma knowledge and your design knowledge throughout this series. Now, I want this series to be a practical example of learning those skills. So if we're going to go over hotkeys or how components work, we're not just going to do that by theory. We're going to do that by working on files that have actual design elements. And we're going to learn that through practical real world examples, not just by drawing gray rectangles on the screen. This first episode, though, is going to focus on the interface for Figma. It's thankfully very simple, but I do believe uh, it's a foundational skill to move forward. This will be the one episode where we're not going to look at any designs, but once we're done with this, moving forward, it will be all design focused. So just stick through this first one, get some of those foundational skills in, and then we're going to move forward into some more exciting elements. So let's get started right away by looking over here on this left hand navigation. Figma is a cloud-based design tool, which uh, means it runs in the web. However, right now we're seeing it running in its desktop form, which is just a, a web electron wrapper. That basically just means it, it's wrapping the, the web version of Figma uh, in a desktop-based wrapper. Now, Figma, because it is a cloud-based design tool, does not have a local project structure. You do not store Figma files on your computer directly. You store them all in your Figma account. So by default, you'll be presented with a list of your files, which you can see right here. I like to organize my files because I'm a freak and I don't like everything just shoved into one area. So I create a team named after myself. You can create as many teams as you want and teams just act as a way to better organize your files or, or to share your files with other people. Now, because I have a team named after myself, I'm able to come in here and add different sections like apps or websites where I can store my files in a more organized sense. By default, they will all just be shown in one area. The top nav here, we've got a few action buttons. Right here we have notifications. Now Figma is a very powerful collaboration tool. This is another one of its powerful features that shows its use for UI UX application or web design because it's a collaborative tool where multiple users can log in at the same time and interact with the page just like you could with Google Docs. Whenever a change happens or a comment is left, it will show up here in the notifications. If you want to make a new file, we can do that by pressing this plus button or by going right here and pressing new file. We also can import existing files and import sketch files. Right here, we're able to change which user we are logged in as or go to our account settings. And then if you have files open, you will see them in this tab bar here at the top. If you have any questions related to something Figma related, they do have a little help and resources section right here. Uh, I do recommend looking at some of these in case you get stuck. Now let's go ahead and jump inside a file. I'm going to double click on this example file right here. And now we are given the file view. In file view, we will see that this tab bar up here has changed and our left and right hand navigation panes have changed as well. Let's go ahead and start with this left hand uh, nav. We are given two tabs, one for layers and one for assets. Layers will show you your layers in the file, very similar to Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch, you name it, any tool with layers, it works just the same here. We also are given a tab for assets. 
Assets will show you your components that you have either in a library or in your file. Now I will explain the components and libraries in another video. For now, just know that you can find them here under assets once you have them created. You also can change what page you have shown uh, if you would like to do that. Pages just act as a, as a way to group multiple frames together. So if you wanted to organize your file more than just one giant page, you can create a couple of smaller pages and organize it that way. We'll go ahead and collapse that down. The right hand side nav is, is going to give us three tabs. We have design, prototype, and code. These tabs will show you contextual information based on what is selected. Right now, nothing is selected, so we are given the global view for design, prototype, and code. That means if I was to change the background color, I am changing it for the page because that is the global selection. Prototype tab will show you your base prototype settings. I will cover prototyping in a separate video, but this is where the global prototype settings live. And then code view will give you a generated CSS, a Swift, uh, or I think Kotlin or uh, XML for the, uh, the Android generation here. Now, these generated codes are good, but they are not production ready. And if anything, they serve more as an example for how these things might look. Now, let's go ahead and look at this top bar up here. We'll start from left and work our way right. Our tools for designing are here on the left. We've got our move and scale tool, which are right here. We've got a frame tool and a slice tool. We've got a bunch of different shapes right here, as well as the ability to place an image. We also have a pen and pencil tool and a text tool. These are the tools you'll be using for your designing. This comment tool, however, is not a design tool. Unfortunately, it is grouped with them, so that can be a little confusing. But this comment tool allows you to place comments like in Google Docs if you wanted to leave a comment in a specific area. This works just the same way. You click comment, you can click an area, and then you can leave a comment there for all users of the file to see. In the middle here, we have our file name. To change that, simply click, and now we can type a new name. It also shows you breadcrumbs for the organization structure of where your file lives. Right now you can see this file lives under drafts. Right here we'll see all the currently logged in users uh, as little icons. And then if you wanna view what a specific user is seeing, you can click on their profile image and it will take you to, to what they're seeing. We also have the ability to share our prototype, which we can do by pressing share and then filling out this information on, on how we wish to share it, who has access to it, what kind of permissions they have. But we will cover more of that near the end of our series after we create a cool design. And then finally, we have our presentation view. This will show us our prototype in action and allow us to interact with our design in an interactive way. Now that we have a good foundation there, let's go ahead and quickly create a foundation for us to move forward with. So let's go over here and select frame. Frames are similar to artboards if you're coming from an Illustrator background, and these are just groupings for your content. When you have a frame selected, you'll see this right-hand nav changes to give you some presets for a frame size. Let's go ahead and select MacBook Pro. And this creates a frame which is 1440 by 900. This gives us a good aspect ratio and size for what a MacBook Pro would use. Now that we have a frame selected, let's click over here twice to rename it. And we're gonna call this home, like we're gonna design a home page or something. And now let's draw a rectangle. Let's go over here, rectangle. You also can get to it by pressing R and then just drawing. All right, let's go ahead and center this bad boy up. Now that this is selected, you can see that this right hand nav has changed. You can see each of these tabs have changed contextually because now this is selected. If you're coming from a sketch or an XD background, these controls will look very familiar. But if you're not used to seeing these controls, uh, I will walk you through them quickly. And then as we do more designing, we'll learn them in detail. 
We have some responsive design controls here. We have some layer controls here, which is like a global opacity, but just for the layer. We have our fill colors, which we can add or remove. We also have strokes, effects like drop shadows. And then if we wish to export just this selection, we can create an export right here by enabling it for this selection. Okay, well, that is the initial interface for Figma. Moving forward, we're gonna learn a lot more. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask, but also have confidence that we will go over these time and time again throughout our designing. Moving forward, we're gonna be learning about components and special hotkeys, and then we're gonna work our way into more specific design techniques and design practices. As we do that, we'll develop new techniques and we'll grow in our confidence in Figma. Until then, I'm Max.